Hey guys, welcome to SS Unitech Social Decide and today we are going to start with the get metadata activity. So in this video, we are going to see about the get metadata activity and in the next video, we'll be going to see about the filter activity and then after we'll be going to see about the for each loop. So these videos you should watch in a sequence. So don't skip any video. So first, let's try to understand about the requirement and then we will see about the get metadata activity. So as per our requirement, we are having a storage account and this storage account, as you can see, having multiple files. So under this input, it is having the employee data along with the payroll data. So for example, in the employee data, it is having the information for the employee. As you can see here, employee India, May 2022. And if we can see the data under this edit, so it is having the comma separated values there and employee ID, employee name, employee address and department name. So these are the information available inside the employee file. And inside the payroll file, it is having the salary information for the employees. So as we can see for three employees, payroll month, after that the salary amount, then the tax amount. So this is the information and under this it is having as you can see two different set of files employees having different set of files and payroll is having different columns on their files so as per the requirement on the monthly basis we just want to process all these files and loading the employee data into the employee table in the sql server and payroll data into the payroll table inside the sql server so this is the actual requirement that we need to do by using azure data factory so for reading the data from this container, we are required to use the get metadata activity. So what is the get metadata activity? You can use the get metadata activity to retrieve the metadata of any data inside the Azure Data Factory or Snaps pipelines. So as I told you, if you want to read the data from the Azure blog storage one by one, then we are required to use the get metadata. And we can also use the output of the get metadata activity in the conditional expression to perform the validation. So as you have already seen, we are having two different set of files like employee files and after that the payroll files. So we want to segregate the employee files in a different output and the payroll file in a different output and we'll be going to do the further operation on that. Now, what is the metadata types? So by using the get metadata activity, what we can get in the output, we can use the item names, we can use the item type, size, created, last modified, then the child items, column count and exist. So these are the major types that we can use to validate. So go to on the Azure Data Factory and we'll try to create a pipeline and under that pipeline, we'll be going to see all these in the real time now here i just want to create a new pipeline so let me click here on the new pipeline and let me call this pipeline as get metadata so after that here under the activities we can search for the get metadata so we can drag and drop this get metadata activity now here we can see the general tab and under the general tab we can call the name of this activity so we can call like getting employee and payroll file info so we cannot use this ampersand so let me call this and so now we can also provide the description if required, then the timeout, retry. So all these are same as we have already seen in the other task in the earlier videos. Now go to on the settings. So under the settings, so this is the required thing. You need to set up the data set from where we want to get the information. So I just want to create a new data set here. And our source is the Azure blob storage. So let me search for the blob stories click on continue then the type of the file as we have already seen which is the comma delimited file so we can select this and click on continue now here we can call this as 
get metadata now then we can see the link service so you need to remember we have to set up the link service to this input folder only so we can go here and try to click on new and let me call this as get metadata we can select the subscription after that we need to select the storage account so here the storage account is ssu testing that you can see so we need to select the ssu testing here now everything looks good we can test the connection it should succeed so connection succeed click on create so it is creating that so now successfully created so we have created the link service now here we can see the file path so we can browse from here so under that if we can go ssu testing then we are having these folders so our files are available under the input folder so we need to select the input from here and after that we are not required to select any of these files because we want to keep the information for all those files so we can click on ok without selecting any of these files now everything looks good we can click on ok so we have successfully set up for the data set so once we have set up the data set then we can see the field list so under the field list so click on new so under the argument it is having the child items exist item name item type last modified so these are the types of label for the azure blob storage so first under the child item so where we can use this child item so if you can select the child item then it is going to loop through under any folder like we have selected input folder so it is going to check all the files those are available under that folder so under the input it is having these four files so it will keep the information for all these four files so after selecting this child item we can debug this and we'll see the output on this so we can wait a little bit so it is executing now here we can see under the output so under the child items it has two properties first is the name and second is the type so name we can see the file names and what is the type which is the file similarly for the second third fourth and fifth so all those are having the name and types so in the output we can see all these now let me select the other arguments like exist so if your input folder will exist only then it will return true otherwise it will return false so let me debug and we'll see the output from here so it's on debug mode so it's in queue so it got succeed now let me check the output of this so under the output as we can see the exist seems true because the input folder is available so that's why this is true if input folder is not there then this will return false so this is also very important while we are going to check whether the folder is available or file is available or not or any table is available inside the sql server then this is very important let me check the other properties like the item name so as we have inside the data set set up for the input folder so the item name should be the input of the folder so let me refresh this now let me check the output of this so the item name that we can see the input so this is the item name now let me select the other properties like item type so the item type that should be the folder because we have set up the data set up to the folder level so let me try to check the output of this so we can see the item type which is the folder so that i told you now in the other properties like the last modify when we have last modified or created this folder so this will return that date so let me debug this and we'll see the output of this as well so this is on queue in progress completed now let me check the output of this so here we can see the output last modify was 2022 0313 so on that date it was modified so this is the all properties for the azure blob storage let me go and we'll select the child items because we are required to have the child items in our case 
in the next video we will be going to see if the file name is having employee then we want to filter out the employee in one data set and if the file name contains payroll then that will be in another data set in next video we will be going to see the filter activity and how we can do the filter there so thank you so much for watching this video if you really like this video please subscribe our channel to get many more videos don't forget to press the bell icon to get the notification of our newly uploaded videos see you in the next video